All stories are basically a way of saying something without directly saying it. And I can't remember any other time when a movie has more effectively achieved this than Life of Pi. It's the kind of movie where if you're a little bit of a deep thinker and if you're not afraid of spiritual things, then you'll see a lot more in the story than just what it directly shows you. After I saw this for the first time, I initially thought to myself, this is not a movie for atheists because the underlying theme is all about God. But now that I've thought about it for a while, I don't believe that's the case. It's not really about God. It's not asking does God exist or not. What it's asking, I think, is what place does a belief in God have in today's modern world? And I think Life of Pi answers that exceedingly well. But first, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the movie, don't keep watching, because we're going to be discussing everything that happens in it. So let's talk about what the different animals represent it, and especially Richard Parker the tiger. Towards the end of the movie, we learn that Pi's description of all the animals was his way of explaining what had happened on that boat. The movie tells us that the orangutan was his mother, the hyena was the cook, the zebra was the injured Chinese sailor, and the tiger, Richard Parker, was Pi. The cook cannibalizes the injured sailor as the hyena ate the zebra. Pi's mother fought off the cook when he went after Pi, as the orangutan fought off the hyena but was killed by it. And when Pi saw his mother die at the hands of the cook, that's when the tiger emerged. That's what the film tells us. But here's what it didn't directly tell us, but I believe was trying to tell us. Each of the animals represented not only a person, but also was a personification of different emotional states that arose during Pi's experience. The hyena personifies selfishness, cruelty, and violence. The zebra personifies fear and desperation. The orangutan personifies motherly love and affection, and a need to rise above animalistic traits. The tiger, Richard Parker, I believe was the personification of the evil that is inherent in the heart of every man. Pi said about the cook, he said, he was an evil man, but worse still, he brought out the evil in me. See, we never see Richard Parker until Pi goes to attack the hyena after the orangutan is killed. At that moment, when Pi decides to kill out of hatred, Richard Parker appears, because hatred and evil appears in Pi for the very first time. And here's where it gets particularly interesting. The remainder of the time on the boat between Pi and Richard Parker is the struggle that's going on within Pi himself to deal with the evil that has arisen inside him. That evil almost consumed him several times, just as Richard Parker almost did. And if you notice some of the different strategies that Pi used to try and handle Richard Parker, they're similar to the different ways that people try to deal with hatred that's in their heart, for whatever reason. First, Pi tried to outmuscle him. That didn't work. He tried to make friends. That didn't work. He tried to ignore him, that didn't work either. Eventually, he managed to train Richard Parker up to a certain degree so that they could live with each other. And an uneasy truce was brokered between them. You see, when somebody goes through a terrible ordeal, they often come out of it the other end filled with hate. If you've ever spoken to a World War II veteran, especially one that was, say, captured by the Japanese and has endured all kinds of hardship, you'll know that they still have a great deal of hatred for the Japanese even though the war ended over 60 years ago. See, the thing about hatred is it actually will help you to survive. Hate can keep you going. It can keep you pushing forward when you want to just collapse. Pi expressed this when he said about Richard Parker, my fear of him keeps me alert. Tending to his needs gives my life purpose. But the problem is, hate doesn't go away once the ordeal has passed. It stays with you. In the movie First Blood, Rambo shows this when his old military commander says to him, it's over, and Rambo shouts back, nothing is over. You don't just turn it off. Just because the war was over doesn't mean that Rambo can just turn off all that hatred all of that anger that kept him going through those years. Like I said, hate stays with you. And when it doesn't have anything external to feed off anymore, it turns on you. It turns on its creator. And if someone lives with hate for a long time, it can actually become like a comfort. You actually come to need it. And we see this in Pi's relationship with Richard Parker. Their uneasy truce eventually turns into a need to the point where Pi is cradling Richard Parker's head in his lap. Sometimes it feels safer to stay secure in our own hatred rather than just let it go. Many war veterans would rather keep their hatred there than let it go 
because it's become a comfort to them. And if you recall, after the boat is thrashed by a storm, Pi and Richard Parker are laying there side by side at the bottom of the boat. They had both resigned themselves to the fact that they were going to die. So Pi curls up with his hate and awaits the inevitable. And it is at this point that something happens. They find the island. So how does the island fit in with any of this? Well, I believe that the island is the boat. Remember that Pi described it as a floating island that moves over the sea, just like the boat itself does. And he also said that the island was a carnivore. He said he knew that if he stayed there, it would be the end of him. So I believe that Pi was lying there in the boat and he had given up completely when he realized that if he didn't get up and get moving, this boat would be his coffin, just as he said the island would be his grave. If he had not had that realization, that moment of him lying on the boat's floor would have just continued forever. He would have died there. But Pi decided he didn't want to die there. That this boat slash this island, it wasn't going to be his coffin. The moment when he decided to leave the island and set out to sea again is a pivotal moment in his battle with his hate over what he went through. He made the decision to brave the uncertainties of the sea rather than being trapped in a cycle of hatred and anger. And I think that that's why, from the moment of Pi leaving the island to where he lands on the beach and is rescued, we don't see Richard Parker in that time. We know he's there, but the trip seems uneventful in terms of the relationship between the two of them. This is because when Pi chose life over hate, he won that battle. His hate was there, as Richard Parker was there on his boat during the final journey. But he wasn't being dominated by Richard Parker anymore. He wasn't being dominated by his hate anymore. It wasn't making his choices for him. He had won the fight against his own evil at that point. There was only one thing left for him to do, to let it go. Which leads us to the scene on the beach as Richard Parker is walking away. And Pi is watching, hoping that he will look back. But he doesn't look back. And when he is gone, Pi sobs like a child. It's not an easy thing to conquer the anger and the hatred that comes to us out of an ordeal, but it's even harder to try to let it go. After all, our hate was a friend that helped us to survive, but in the end, we have to let it go because if we don't, we're not living, we're dead. So how does all of this relate to the theme of God or the theme of having a belief in God? Well, when we see the older Pi in the beginning of the movie and throughout the rest of the movie, he certainly doesn't look like a man that's been through this kind of stuff. He doesn't look like a man that's seen his own mother murdered, has killed another man with a fishing knife, who's lost his whole family and had to cannibalize others to survive. He doesn't look like someone who's been through all that. He looks happy. He has a life. He has a family of his own, and he's living, he's not just surviving. And here, I think, is the answer the movie is giving to the question that it poses. What place does belief in a God have in today's modern world? And the answer the film gives us is this. Belief in God doesn't mean that horrible things won't happen to you, that you might not someday be victimized by evil. But the advantage of having a belief in God is, it can prevent you from being consumed by that evil, prevent you from becoming that evil yourself. Pi expresses this to the writer at the end. After having told him the two different versions of his experience, he asks, which one do you prefer? As in, the version where he suffers evil at the hands of another, or the version where he conquers that evil by not becoming it and choosing life over hate. When the writer responds that he likes the one with the tiger in it, Pi answers, and so it is with God. Now at first I interpreted that as him saying, God prefers the second story. But now I think he's saying, so it is with God, he was meaning, that's how God works. He doesn't create the evil, but he gives man the strength to resist it. And hence, that's something that man will always need. 